over to you, Linda. Perfect. So thank you to everybody for joining us this morning. You're extremely welcome to another Cygnus Cafe morning coming uh, via the wonderful sanctuary, the Healing Sanctuary at Harry Edwards. And we are so blessed again with the calibre of our speakers. So delighted that Candace Caddick can join us this morning. Candace has been a member of our little Cygnus community, our growing Cygnus community, actually. It was very little when it started, when Candace joined us, but it's got, got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and we're delighted that she's here with us today. So Candace is uh, so many things, has so many, um, wow you know, strings to her bow. She is incredibly intuitive. She's a healer. She's a Reiki master. She is angelic. She channels wisdom from the angels, from the universe. She's, oh, and she runs courses. So do check out her website. If you've got the email about the Signals Cafe, you will see that there was a link to her website there. But definitely, definitely check out what she does because one of her courses is definitely... Um, uh, spends time with the, with the very ancient standing stones and that's on my list of my to-do list <laughs> definitely want to come and do that with you Candace um, anyway I'm no no further ado I shall pass you over wonderful Candace welcome oh well thank you so much for having me this morning um, it's I do miss going over there it's the most beautiful place to go to be able to go to the Cygnus meetings and share and and here we've all been locked away from it for so long or shut away from it um, but this morning, I thought, well, I always like doing the thing where, where people are allowed to ask questions. So I would like to get to that. But first, I thought I should say what I've been doing for a year and a half. And one of the, or do you want me to introduce myself? I'm sort of leaping in like everyone knows me. But uh, okay, so Reiki Master. And uh, when I first did my Reiki, then I found that that was, for me, that was just opening up the universe and I could hear. I could hear all kinds of things. Um, but mainly when you're a channel, you tend to hear the people or the things you're interested in hearing. And I was interested in hearing angels and practice and practice, practice and practice. And then they, they would come in. They would come in and to the point where I started writing their books. And they had a lot of information they wanted to tell us about the planet. And, who she is and what she's like and our relationship to her and our purpose in being here. And they just keep sort of unfolding this story. So if you started at the beginning of the books or even if you picked one, up one in the middle, it's, a, it's a, our story with the planet just sort of carries on and moves and develops. So I got up to the book before the one, well, I'm writing one, so I always think it's finished, but. It's not in print, but the book that I, after we die that I did a year or two ago, that was when they're like, oh, you gotta get this done before everybody starts dying. It's like, what, what, what do you mean by everybody starts dying? Uh, because they were concerned about the level of fear on the planet that people were afraid of dying and the feeling of lack that you're looking forward to at the end of your life where you have you lack your life basically and how that feeds through to, to all the other ways you think about not having enough in your life. So it was a what they considered the most important thing to be afraid to let go of your life. So it didn't mean that everybody was going to die suddenly, although it looked like it for a while. It meant that they wanted to almost use COVID to change the energy around death so that people would not approach death with, uh, with fear, but that they would, that it would become easier. So you're looking at the old way of where people would die in their sleep rather than die from, die in hospital of some painful illness. It was just, can it be easier to let go of your life? And this is part of the process that we're going through now. And that's why COVID basically is here, I guess. It's just to let us, to get us to loosen our grip. So that was that book. And then it leads on into this one that I've just written now. And then I, last night I put up an advance order thing on my website in case anybody wanted it. And it, so this one carries on with saving the planet, saving ourselves in a way by saving the planet. 
and and then just sort of goes through a lovely story into the end of the universe, which is the stuff I'm always interested in. Where we go through the stellar gateway, you know, we go through the stellar gateway and how it all changes when you hit that higher dimensional world and, and come to an end, not come to our end, but go on to a step that is different from what we have now. I don't think anything ever really ends. And that's been interesting. So the, a book that covers what it is like to live in a five dimensional world and what you might think that is, is not really what it is. And using energy to make changes and using your own physical activity and choices that create energy to make changes. And they go into things like conspiracy theories and the energy behind them. So that's most, so I have my books on my website which is just my, if you type in my name, my website should come up. And then the, the other thing, so here we are, all were last spring locked in. So my friend Grania, and I can see that she's come here. So my friend Grania Warner and I, we started this Earth Magic Healing Group, and then we just love this. Uh, so we were meeting three times a month uh, on Monday. So two, twice on Monday evening and once on Monday lunchtime. And I get them guided meditations through from quite often it's Archangel Michael because he's an earth angel. And we, we, re, we go into the meditative state, the group, and then suddenly the group is working together to create blueprints for the new earth. And this has meant a lot to us actually to be able to do this. So there, you know, you would like to like to say, I would like the earth to be this, and then you can think of all these paradise words that you might like for the earth, but then we are actually doing that. This is open to anybody who would like to do this work and wants to come along. The, we, by joining as a unit, as a whole inside of our meditative state, somehow it's like, instead of just one person working together, it's as many people as are there that day. That's quite a strong thing. And then we're linked up with angels and uh, elementals and any beings of light that wish to join and then off we go so what what so we started like that it's like we're doing this we're healing the earth uh, in this way because the people who come are energy workers and then we started to realize wait a minute there's something else going here on the side which is that when when we're in that state <clears throat> So when we're in that state that the angels have taken to teaching us. So we've gone back to being taught again. They can get a hold of us when we're in a meditative state much more easily. <clears throat> so for instance, we had a, a big time last April where they just sent the insects in to talk to us for a month. And whatever you thought you knew about insects was, well, we didn't know anything. You no, know, we didn't realize, I mean, I had some experiences with the ants and didn't realize that all they wanted to do, the, what made them really happy was to make as many ants as possible because then birds would eat the ants. It's like their whole purpose in life was to be an ant and to provide food. And, and when all those ants go flying off on that flying ant day in the heat of the summer, it's, it's like the best day of the year because then they are food for the birds. And then the birds are food for something else. It's like everything had a place. Everything was interconnected and you can't miss out a part of it. So if you killed all the ants, the rest of the world that is not humans wouldn't have much to eat. Then we wouldn't have much to eat. So we're going through all these um, monthly meditations and, and, the, and the change, you know. So we'll, we've just finished one for September, but coming into October, we'll have one. And then you get three shots at it for three different experiences. So we have done that. Um, and we put tickets on Eventbrite for 10 pounds. So if anybody wants to come, that's for 10 pounds. Uh, and, um, and then the final thing that I did again with Grania was to, I had St. Germain come and ask me to do a healing group for the USA on the grounds that the suppressed violence there could break out. And you mustn't think that if it breaks out in the US that it'll stop at the borders. It's 
for the entire social fabric of the planet. He wanted to increase the love over there and pull back on the violence. So we so made up a USA healing group called Healing Divisions, Strengthening Love. And that's uh, something that I do offline once a fortnight on a Sunday night at eight o'clock. Doesn't matter if you do Reiki or pray, prayers or any kind of healing. It's just we join offline and I send out a newsletter to say which states we're doing because we've I've divided up the state so that it gets a real good sort of soaking of love as it comes around, as the schedule comes around. <laughs> so that's, so I start off doing that like we're altruistic, but we're healing the United States. And then you realize you're learning a lot doing that. So I sent out the newsletter that has people's experience, anybody who contributes any feedback. And we start to realize the feedback that people are giving is quite extraordinary feedback really. But we've all learned by holding that many people in love that we learn again. So, so it's been sort of a shift in emphasis uh, for the last 18 months. Only got to do one um, one of my courses that I like, which was listening to your spirit guides and did that online with on Zoom with breakout rooms. And it's possible, but I just would really like to do things in person again and go out places like this, Avebury and Stonehenge. So have I forgotten anything? I had a lovely list, which is now gone. Let's see if I can get back in here. Okay, so I think that was most of the things. I mean, the USA thing is free. We didn't, we don't charge for that. But I think that's most of the things that I wanted to say as an introduction. Oh, okay, Grania's reminded me. <laughs> so <laughs> under the um, Earth Magic banner, what we did was we did we did do a workshop, and again, this was three guided meditations and they said, why don't you do something to heal people on grief? And we, so we came in July and we did three Saturdays running for an hour and a half. And it was, I mean, how do you heal people on grief? So they come through with their meditations and they send us into this space where, where we can work on the aspects of grief that are touching us. And for some people, it was very fresh, and for some people, it's not, you know, it's still coming, as it were. It's not, not present, but in the future. So starting in on that and letting people talk and have feedback after the meditation, then moving into the next week was joy. That was interesting. And you don't know what people have problems with until they're actually doing their own, their meditations and what affects them. So we, so we did joy. So we're sort of like grief and joy. And then the third weekend was balance. And, and I don't know what you think balance is grief and joy, but it was kind of like, we're not telling you right now. You have to go in the course so, it does, so you don't sort of preempt what you think the balance thing is, but it's, um, so it was grief, joy and balance to take people all the way through the process of that. And we're going to do that again um, soon. But if anybody's interested in that, they should email me on my website. Put your name on the list, get you on that course. And it was very, it was very interesting to see how supported you could be by the earth as well as the angels doing any of these, any of these sort of personal workshops. <clears throat> So I think that's everything. Anyway, so has anybody thought of any questions they wanted to ask me that they wanted the angels to just channel through and answer? <clears throat> Counting on Linda to find them. I haven't seen anything in the chat yet, but please, everybody, don't be shy. If you've got questions, especially, you know, with everything that's going on, then this is your moment. So, 
And when I would, <clears throat> when I was able to come in person into Sigma Sina, you know, then we'd get, sometimes the questions would just lead into each other and we could have a discussion. I don't know if people um, want to put their hands up. Using the reactions button, if you go into reactions and then there's a, a waving hand. It looks says clap on it. Could I could I ask about I, I missed the little bit about in the beginning about you said the energy behind the conspiracy theories. I wonder if you could talk about uh, that. Yeah, this is not a this is quite a dark energy behind yeah. them. And and it's a real shame in a way because this was supposed to be the the time when this was the time of the healers that we were all going to be really working to us, you know, for humanity and for the earth. And then these conspiracy theories, which are really dark, they sort of came in and they've sucked off a lot of the people from the right and the left. And a lot of the people on the left were healers and they're, it's, it's taken about a third of the healers, just taken them, they're gone. They're into, it's like they're lost. I mean, they're lost for us, for, for working with us. So the healing, the energy behind the conspiracy theories, some of this stuff was really, really horrible. And any time that you're sort of in touch with anything as horrible as like, oh, what were they? I mean, some of the worst stuff about drinking baby's blood and all that. It's like, really? You know, this is not, this is just to repulse you. Actually, it was just about winning elections. It was about getting something for themselves by slagging off someone else. And I could follow the energy back, follow it back, follow it back, follow it back to um, sort of like rooms with men who just wanted to retain power. You know, there was nothing new or unusual about the source of the conspiracy theories. It was just a, a, a way to try and make sure that you can't hung on to the power. Is that, does that answer it, Lynn? Yes. Uh, yeah, my son is into it and he doesn't call himself a conspiracy theory, but it's causing such rifts. I just listen. Yeah. And that's all I can do. And yeah, I don't want to get involved, you know. And, well, don't get, don't so get talk, involved. No. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Actually, though, the book is like a whole chapter and a half on it, and which is much more. When they talk about something, they're so logical and organized and everything is comes out just perfect and then i try and summarize it and i always feel like like i um i feel inferior i shouldn't really but i feel like i scramble it up a bit and i'm not really scrambling it but it's it's hard to take it in such a logical way but it is about truth and the energy of truth and your integrity and what where it's missing oh and the other thing that they talk about i'll just throw this in you know, they're like, you're willing, you're not willing to believe the, and we'll take any mainstream broadsheet newspaper or news station, a proper news station like the BBC. You don't believe them, but they've got people out, they have to double check their sources. They, they don't put things on with one source. They have to get their sources from like different, not two people from the same office, but people from different places to uh, fact check their stories. This is completely different from somebody sitting in their basement making up stuff with no checks. And the other thing they said was to just keep an eye on the news. So, so we saw what was happening this week. So you could say, well, this week there was petrol was not delivered to petrol stations, blah, 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 blah. So you saw all that happening. And then if in two months time, this was disputed, well, the fact that you were paying attention means that you can say, no, but I saw that. I know what I saw. You have to be a little bit aware of what's going on without immersing yourself into the news like a news junkie. So that when people start to say, no, that didn't happen, you say, no, I remember that. So, okay. So that was their other thing about conspiracy theories that if you inform yourself, you probably won't fall for everything. Right. So there were questions now in chat. Ooh, one of the most important things we can do now to help the earth. Ah. All right, I'm gonna do this. Um, so Grania has asked this, and I think that one of the most important things we can do now personally 
is don't be the person who buys any more of that single use plastic or it's whatever it is that you know is not right. And I think I said something myself yesterday and then I was like, ah, I just said, you know, I thought it was about a, a mobile phone. I thought, oh, well, I think I said, oh, well, when this one gets old and breaks, I'll just get another one. And then I realized that I, that was a phone that would go in the landfill. And, and it's like every single thing that we're used to saying and doing is not, not to be repeated and gone on with. We have to actually stop doing, doing the things that hurt the earth. And then the action creates the energy. So if like I, it's like I would be the beginning of a spring and that the energy would flow from me like water and other people could feel it. And it would influence them. So it's like your actions create the energy. So you, it's important that people take the actions, create the energy that helps the earth, stops doing things they know will harm the earth. And that will change. That's that's the kind of thing we can do. So and that will that will change. Okay. So I'm going down to Jenny. Asking for the best. Angel help. Which one? Or any for your family when they're upset or sad. I just assume that when I ask for help, that I, the angel that will come is the right angel. So I tend to use words like most appropriate when I'm asking for help. Because I don't even know all their names. I don't even know, you know, there's so many of them out there. So you get a feel of, of great compassion from them. And I think the ones that are used to working with me and my family are probably the ones that come. But you if you don't know their names, it doesn't matter because the you're asking for the most appropriate help. So the most appropriate angel comes, please, for to help with, and then you can name off what you think their your problem is. And sometimes you don't know what the problem is. So you can just say, I don't know what the problem is, but I know we need help. Um, and it always, what you feel is the love that they have for you and how much they, will look to give you the best help and the help that they can see you need. So you might think what's one thing and they're looking at you thinking, no, I think that we have to start at another point and then they'll start there. As long as you're giving them permission like that, like the most appropriate, just do the best thing for me. And then other times you don't need to do that because you know exactly what's wrong. <laughs> It's a, it's a real nice time. You know, you can have a real good relationship with angels. It's a real conversational give and take. Uh, <clears throat> if they are, you know, they're beings. We're beings and they're beings. And then they just, you just relate to them. And the more you relate to them, the more you understand about them and the more they understand about you. Jenny, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, it, it, you know, we all get troubled by obviously people in our lives and, and so on. And it, but it pains, well, it can pain you yourself in the heart because you feel powerless. Ah, yeah. Um, this is letting so, it go. <laughs> you have to let some of this yeah. go, especially yeah. adult yeah. children. Letting adult yes. children. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like, when you're doing your best, what else can you do? And you can ask for help and, and they will give it to you. And maybe they look at your heart and think, we're gonna start here with Jenny's heart today. And another day they might say, well, <laughs> we're gonna start with that thing that's troubling her. I, I think that you can ask for help for other people, but you can't interfere really. Can't. It's like that thing, like if you were working for, for yeah. personal ascension, well, you can only ascend for yourself. You can't do it for somebody else. Anyway, is that enough? Is that good? That's, that's great. Yeah, okay. thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Jane. Today is Archangel Michael's Day here in Denmark. Is it all over the world? 
I don't know. So helping the eight. So the question is, after that, there's so not, there's not so little talk about the archangels here. Is there anything we I can do to help and honor their work? Well, you know, Archangel Michael is is that big Earth angel. Two Earth angels: Archangel Michael, Archangel Uriel, and. I know he's got this sword or the fiery sword or any sort of sword and he's he can feel quite fierce but he is an earth angel and we say that he's the fighting angel but that's not not very angelic to go around and fight although and you know although they are good at resisting beads of darkness in the past so to honor their work i think is to do what they would have you do uh, earth angels want you to help the earth other angels that are, uh, they have, it's not that they're different from each other so much, but they have a different flavor. It's like having different flavors of ice cream, a lot, a lot of this. So if you prefer to work with like a slightly different thing than earth angels, boy, they you can read about them and and try and do what they're, they're, they're like teaching. So try and follow their teachings. It's like there's um, like the Archangel Esmariel is the Archangel of Transformation. And if you ask her to come and help you transform, well, suddenly you're trying to transform, but you've got the Archangel of Transformation helping you. It makes a difference. It makes it easier for you. There's Archangel of Hope. Um, these are some that the very first book I wrote. I've got to put my books here in case I wanted to do it. So this book. So this book. Planet Earth today. So I had six arch archangels come through in that book and talk about how they could, what their roles were and what their purposes were and how they could help you. So we had hope and transformation, Archangel of Light Arch and Archangel Melchizedek and they talked about Atlantis and talked about how things, how they work. And Archangel of Darkness who gave the most clear cut explanation of how everything works and it was sort of like his job was to be dark and this is what that involved and he would just but he's the one behind all the fear and hate and lies uh it's just very interesting but it, it's to remember that there is always that help out there and again you don't have to know the name if you if you sort of have a feel like things haven't been going the way they normally are for the last month you can just ask for help again, for the most appropriate angel. And you have to imagine angels standing there waiting to be asked for help because they don't just come and interfere without asking. And then usually the answer is yes. I can't think of any time when they said no, they wouldn't help you. Sometimes the help that they give you is not exactly what you expected. Um, maybe you need to learn something and the lesson is a bit right in your face and you thought, wait a minute, I thought everything was going to be lovely working with angels, and, but then you learned it. So you don't have to learn it again or anything. You've got it now. Anyway, so where is Jane? Jane, is that, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Candace. That's really <laughs> nice. And the thing is, that you say so many beautiful things and it just opens up new questions but uh, <laughs> yeah thank you very much I just think that it's a very special day because it's one of those days that are totally forgotten historically uh, and I just think it's such a beautiful um, chance to honor uh, Archangel Michael just yeah. to give a li little focus to what he stands for. And I would just love to, you know, I think I'm gonna take up this tradition again. Well, yes. And I, as you were talking, I thought, and it is a beautiful day. I thought, well, to honor Michael would be to go outside somewhere pleasant and say, this is a beautiful earth. Yes. You know, I see it. I'm not walking through it with my eyes blinded. I see it and it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much. It goes very well hand in hand with my work. So <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, right. 
I'm not sure I've got many more. Um, okay, so there could be more questions because I think I feel like I've done the questions that were in the chat, unless there are more questions. Okay. I, I haven't seen any more questions coming in, Candace, but um, I'm sure that there are questions out there. So, you know, don't be shy, people, because this is your opportunity and, uh, you know, you, you've got a direct line here. So put your questions down. <laughs> I was because, you know, this group always has such interesting questions and I didn't know if people would be like, what's happening next year or... Um, or, you know what and then I have to work to get the answer and then I find out stuff <clears throat> so one new message down there so what is happening next year then <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> or even this month we've been told astrologically October is is huge so you know sort of between now and December say even yeah, it's October's in two halves when you look at it. So that first half is a little bit like business as usual. And then the second half mm. has got a big kick in it, doesn't it? I don't know if anybody else is feeling that. Yeah. It's the energy really kicks. What are you getting then, Lynn? I, 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 um, I am very intuitive to my cost sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even want to feel some stuff, but it just comes in. I don't, I don't get um, details. I just get huge feelings. And I keep thinking that the 15th and 16th, 14th, 15th, 16th of October is really significant. Yes. And it's going to change the rest of it. And but for the good of the earth. So it sounds awful. It sounds so, I'm not sure it's going to be particularly something people want, but... Uh, and it may be at a greater level that we're not conscious of, but I think it will be almost like we're going up on another vibration. We're being transcended again, and people will find that difficult more than they are now. That's what I, I could, feel. Yes. It, all right. So let's look, because I, there's a certain, it's like a strength of energy coming through for that kick in October. Like, yes. this is pretty mild, what we have right now for the first two weeks. <laughs> yes. And, and this would be a good time to tie up some loose ends and take care of business so that you're and, ready. And, and ourselves as well. And ourselves. And then yeah. the way things work with the energy, you know, we like, oh, the energy change. Well, that feeds through into everything that happens. Mm. And November looks really like like this, peaks and troughs yeah. and peaks and troughs, yeah. really zigzag. And that's hard to live with because you never have your feet on the ground. You're always being tossed from a, a peak to a trough. And then and then I look at December and all I can hear is growling. Yeah. <laughs> so and I don't think December, and we all, we all love December and the build up to Christmas, but it looks a bit tough. And this is not, Oh, it's tough in the UK. No, this is never just about the UK. It, it's about the world and, and it looking a bit fierce. Mm. So I don't know what would be that fierce. It's lessons I'm getting. Sorry for lessons. interrupting your channel. No, Tell me to stop if you <laughs> It's lessons that people are having to learn. And December would almost be a case of we have to learn this now because you're not listening. That, that's what I'm getting. Yes. And that's what it's been. It's almost like we don't want to give them more than they can handle, but they're not still not listening. Mm. So now we're really going to go for it. Mm. And it's building up, building up, building up. And then you get to next year. And yeah. next year, whatever this year was, next year is different. Next year yeah. is completely different. Yeah. So how different do you want it to be? It's more like, listen now, please. And and take this into account because next year is, it's like we're on, we're on a road now that it's just, we're on this path that is just going. And it's a good thing for us. It may not be fun to live through. So it's, we're all here. We said we'd be here. We're like really strong people. Not everybody is, but this group is that came to, to listen. So we've got the strength to live through this. We said we would do it. We're, we're the ones who, are here to help. So the problem is 
that you have to put humanity design this entire experience on earth so that we could learn who we are and to remember that who we are that we were like just a little tiny fragment like a splinter of god you know that it is divine spark is in all of us so then we're one soul then we come down here like almost eight billion splinters very difficult uh, to to work like that and remember but we're doing it we're trying to do it some of us are doing it it is us speeding up more and more people more faster are doing the ascension and unusually not after they die they're doing it right now so they but then they have to get a grip on on what just happened so they're not necessarily active ascended masters they're sort of dazed ascended masters and mistresses at the moment sort of new ones all the time and so that's good, and that, that changes the energy. And then, but the main thing is, is that you have to get enough people, critical. So, so we okay. <laughs> just do that. Okay. Can, I, I lost you for the last two or three sentences. You froze. No, no, that's this computer. Um, I'm trying to keep an eye on it. As long as somebody's wiggling, I can tell that whether I freeze or not. So it was that we, you know, we, that we have come here, that when to, the last thing that we have to do before we ascend is to put the earth back the way we found it. And then we're done. So we know everything we need. We already know everything we need. We just have to do that. And people will. And some of the things that could be happening in the next year or two that will push us there, I think. A critical mass will tip and we'll be pushed there. So, so now we're coming down to different roles. So those of us who are older are not going to be out there with shovels fixing things. But there are a lot of younger people now that want to do that, want to do that in a way that older people almost don't have the energy for. And we can see that. We can see their enthusiasm and their fear. Mm. And the, you know, the, they are like, what are you doing to us? You've wrecked our entire planet. We have no lives. And if you could just set them loose, they would do this. Not easy for them. Okay, so it's, it's, it would be good if they started to benefit them, if they were grateful for what they already have. And that's a message that could go out through every bit of media rather than, you know, allowing them to live in fear of what they haven't got and they might not have. But they can't do anything about it anyway, can they, in the end? So. And I think they will. I think they'll be the ones. I think they were born for that. And, there's, yes. yeah. and they're pretty young. The ones that came in after 2012... It's very interesting. So this is in this book that I've just been finishing. So this bunch after 2012, like we're very separate. Can you imagine humans that had more of mind sharing and working together better? So it's hard for us to imagine that, but this is what, uh, what they said that these, these young ones are. So what are they, nine years old? You know, you can't wait. You can't expect a lot of, from them at this point in time, but they're coming. All of them, all the all of them on the planet that have been born since 2012, will be working together better. Yeah, some interesting, you know. This is what I love about channeling because when I, I wouldn't even make that up, yeah. <laughs> but they come through and they tell you stuff like that, and and it's like, well, that that sounds great. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like that could work better. And besides them, there have been waves of like the indigo children and the crystal children, and they have all come in to change the energy, carry um, different jobs, uh, influence people differently. Okay, I don't know if I answered that. Gronya asked me. So. There's a hand up, someone with a question, maybe, iPhone. Okay, I don't know who you are, but um, ask, what's your question? Is it me? 
I yeah. can't see the I can't see the page. Yeah, hi, I'm Julie. Um, I oh, I don't know how I'm going to wrap up this question. So my sense is we're in a bit like the Roman Empire. We're in the chaos before the fall, and I think we've got a bit more chaos to go. You know, the division, the hatred, the lies, the endless lies. Um, the the I guess we'd call it the gaslighting, if we want of using that term. Mm -hmm. And I get a sense that it's interesting that you mentioned another generation who might be about nine now, but I, I think it's bigger than that. Uh, I don't know if you get that uh, yourself when you're uh, talking to your angels, but uh, so I'm trying to walk and talk, quite hard work. Um, but I get a sense that um, enough of the division, enough of the lack of love and compassion and if we're going to get to a place of love and compassion and acceptance and tolerance, we're going to have to start teaching that to ourselves. Uh, and, and you're right, I think I, I get a sense we did lose a lot of healers and a lot of very great people to the madness of it, um, which I think is just like I, I akin it to the chaos of an empire. So I have a true faith that we will come to that place of compassion, but I don't think it'll be in the next couple of generations. I, I really don't. I think it'll be a much, much, much longer time for us to get um, <sighs> truly, truly conscious and truly living in God consciousness, because I think that um, it's quite, quite hard work teaching it. And I, I get a sense that it will be us older people that will be teaching it because we've understood it and hopefully those nine-year-olds mm. you talk about will come in with it but do you do you, I don't know if I had to have a question so there wasn't really any questions there was there it was just telling you what I thought or what I sensed um so what question would I ask well what can what can I do what can any of us do to help that process other than what you would already covered of course um because I get a sense that my position to teach that, to teach, to, to, to help people to find their God consciousness and to live in that love and compassion world and tolerance. So that when we're listening to the lies and the division and the hatred, we can look somewhere else rather than align our energy to it. Cause it's quite dark really, as you said. I don't know if there's a question in there. What do you think about all that? <laughs> well, <what laughs> so I'm gonna turn my video off because it's quite hard yes. to get. No, that's fine. I am. Um, so what I thought when you were talking was the, you know, their emphasis is on uh, different people have different jobs. So, so I'm, I'm doing mine when I do this kind of thing. And then you're talking about teaching about love and compassion. And it's like, yeah, do, how would you do that? What, how would you do that? Devise your way of, of living that so that people see your example and teaching that to others. And I'm not sure what that would be, but I think that everyone who has a has an idea or a calling is going to be slightly different from their friends. I mean, I'm lucky that Grandi and I both wanted to do this because it is easier to work with someone. Um, and I also felt that you should be on my USA healing group just, just to see how it works. I'm trying to get enough people. It was like, if you could get people, enough regular people once a fortnight, um, it was, they said, look, it looks like this in the States. Here's a river going over a big waterfall. There's two boats on the river. One's got Republicans, one's got Democrats. They're both going over the waterfall. So this healing group was to change the course of the river. Mm -hmm. And so we just keep slogging away. We just send our healing for like 20, 30, 40 minutes on a, um, once a fortnight. If I ever felt that I had enough people, I think it would just be over. I feel like we're, we're changing the course of the river. Uh, it's interesting work to, to hold like say six or seven states and see how different they are and see how the people are different. And um, I mean, one of the states last time, what, like the division in Nevada was that they couldn't see the earth. You know, they can't get anywhere because they can't see the earth. They're, you can't do anything on this planet effectively if you can't see the earth. You, this is the whole point of being here, um, to be alive and grounded and acting. And you're walking along outside. It's like, well, you're grounded. 
You're grounded. It's You're doing the right thing right there. Here. Mm -hmm. Nice tree. Nice tree yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking uh, the thing lacking is servitude, isn't it? Um, yeah. These people who are effectively controlling and making choices on all our behalves uh, have lost the capacity to be serving. They've become self yes, and quite dishonest in it. And um, yeah. and so it goes beyond politicizing. It goes beyond uh, partisanship and stuff. But I get a sense that, that, I mean, the Buddhist monks would have that down pat to uh, suggest that servitude is, and any, any I don't know, any, um, not religious, but spiritual system would, would, would consider servitude and others working with others so i'd love to join your healing group because all those monks praying for world peace looks like we're going to have to be doing a lot of meditating for world peace yes. um but it does it has it's because we haven't got it in ourselves isn't it it's not inside us to have peace we're all addicted to something we're all hurtful in our conversations with ourselves we don't know how to heal our lives even when we're given the winning lottery numbers it's hard for us to put them on we live in our pain inside and out physically mentally and emotionally so i i i wonder how we could encourage people into service of others because we're all a bit self aren't we and uh we are that's that's my thoughts i sorry i had to share that i was just no no i and, and i think that this is a good thing so i was just going to go into listening because your question on how to encourage people is like how do we Uh, they're saying because service is an aspect of love mm. and and you just have need to to touch into that part of you and this is the strengthening love thing that people haven't the, the the story about not having love on this planet is is huge because it's what has led to the background of lack of service and greed and yeah. all the things that you can think of so if it's sometimes with my work i get the door cracked open and i can see and touch and be connected to the love of the universe which is immensely immense and here we are we're like drip fed love like raindrops or something we hardly get any so we're trying to work without love so some of us so in earth magic because we realize in earth magic that we can do all this stuff for healing the earth, but if humans keep wrecking it, we're in a, we had to we had to work with love. So we have included that. Some people are really working on love and earth magic, and the rest of us are working on something else um, in the same meditation. Um, but in the USA healing, the strengthening love thing. I mean, I've been standing in Washington D.C. week after week, week after week, with my hand on everybody's hearts, connecting them to love. And then in the beginning, they didn't even know what it was. And now when I go there, okay, I'm here. It's like a fortnight, but I'm here again. And you can have all the love you want. And I've got a direct line to the universe. That's who I'm working with. And I'm mobbed. You know, come give me some of that love. So the, the, the ability to not love the earth and to hurt her is lack of love for her and lack of love for others. So, so when I said I learned stuff by doing the USA healing, it, it's the things that you learn in the meditation when you're standing there. Um, sending your healing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I recommend that. If I get up to enough people, uh, it's, it's tell your friends, join us. You know, it doesn't actually, it actually works out pretty well that you can sit down at eight o'clock on a Sunday night in the UK. And um, it seems like it's over. It's just sort of like you start, you're tuned into the healing division, strengthening love. You start in there on the same states and then then after a bit, the energy goes out of your hands and you realize that it's everybody's kind of stopping that night. 20, 30, 40 so where, minutes. Where are you in the States, Candice? Well, I'm here. Because my well, husband... I thought you said, oh, US Healing Group, I thought you said. USA before. Healing Group. We're doing it from the UK because... Oh, sorry. I misunderstood that. Yes. Yeah. So we have uh, mostly, this seems to be Dutch, Irish, and the Netherlands. And now I'm starting to get people in the States on board. Okay which then their feedback is really interesting because they can be sending and receiving at the same time. But they should be on board. 
Mm. All right, that's a should. I shouldn't make that judgment call. Um, yeah, so uh, before we did this one, uh, another friend and I were doing the same thing basically, but for the election healing, and my guys are like, you have to take it all the way through to the end of January. You can't stop in no at the November election. So we just kept doing that. Um, the, you know, just sending healing for the elections all the way through to the end of January. And I think that worked out as a good thing that we were doing that because it just was all going to pieces over there for their elections. So it's the strengthening love. It's, it's just so interesting how some people will come for it and other people turn their backs and walk away. So, okay, more questions? Was, did that anyway answer your question about service? Um, uh, yes, I, <clears throat> I, yeah, I think we've got to do what we would to do. I don't know. I don't, don't know. <laughs> okay, so you don't know right now, but you can ask for angelic help more. Oh, that's a great idea, yes. And if you don't want to work with the angels, work with the Ascendant Masters. And some people work very well with elementals. You know, that it depends on who you are and what kind of person you are. Hmm. That's a you can, great reminder. Thank you. I'm going to try that. Yeah. And you can work in your dreams. So, uh, if you're really struggling, work it. Let's just say, I would like this help, but I think you're going to have to give it to me when I'm asleep and let it percolate up from there. Uh, so Perfect. yeah, just before you go to bed, that's a, that's a good way to start sometimes because really sometimes you don't know where to start. Okay, great. Um, let's have more questions. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I always, I always remember Candace from the last time we were in the um, sanctuary. Somebody asked you about the polar bears, <laughs> and I can remember you saying that they, well, yeah, that, that was a whole different conversation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so how but, are they now? <laughs> yeah, well, I think I know the answer to that actually because I think you told us fairly, very clearly last time. Um, okay, so let, let's talk about all of these animals and insects who are, you know, this year, they're all ready to go. Everyone, every last one of them is ready to leave the planet. They have finished what they came here to do. And the only reason they are here with us at the moment is love. So they're willing to stick their hands out to help us finish. Yeah, so they're all giving us a helping hand and they would like us to finish in love as they have, but they're ready to go. And they, there's some weird things like bees going in and out of the dimensions, going into another dimension. We don't see them. They come back. We see them. Um, so they, it's, yeah. So I, it, then I'm like hearing, it's like, don't worry about the animals because they have finished. And whether their physical bodies are here or not, their, their soul is finished. So, and, and I know that people talk about generations. I don't think we have generations because we, we've really got to somehow pull the planet back so we can live on it. This is really going downhill fast. We, it's like, um, and this is why it was a, a sad thing. I know there may be people who really love Donald Trump, but his, his environmental record was disaster for the planet. And it was kind of like we had maybe nine years and the things that he put into place that are not that easy to reverse. Uh, we're just pulling that nine year deadline closer to us all the time. So there's it like, well, if you want to escape off this planet, there is a, a window you can climb through this window and it's nine years away. Oh, well, not, no, now it's five years away. Well, now it's four years away. Oh, well, now it's three years away. Can you get it done in three years? And then don't quote me on that because things change. But really, everybody needs to pull their socks up and do and change the energy. And the way to change the energy is by you changing everything you do so that you are nothing, no job or thing that you buy, you read the label before you bring it home and it's not in a plastic bottle. Everything you do is like focused on the planet now. 
I mean, I was appalled when I realized when my daughter told me that my shampoo polluted the ocean. It's like, oh, there's, we mm -hmm. live in this mess. We, you know, we have to be so careful. So, so just try everything we do. And then our actions change the energy and maybe we can get that window pushed back. And we don't really need to be on planet earth forever. We just need to be here long enough. So you think the earth's ready to change. All the animals are ready to change. So the, it's like a lot of love and kindness to us to stick around and help us. And we're just like, I don't know, la 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 la, throw the plastic bottle out the window, you know, keep buying it. I go into the supermarket and everything's shiny and wrapped in single use plastic film. You know, I can't even go in there. And that's just my supermarket. And those re are repeated all over the world. You know, that everything wrapped in plastic, everything packaged in plastic. So then we try and think of ways to change this and create ways to change this. But the fastest physical way is to change what you do. You create the new energy. Other people are aware of the energy that you created because you just created it. And things will, will change. And then that's because you've changed. So, so we're all sitting in here in our homes and we all have to change what we're doing. And I would hate to think that everything went straight on downhill three years from now, we're like, blew it. Ah, oh, they blew it. So the very end of this book that I'm finishing, it's talking about how does it, everything end? And, you know, there's a nice ending out there. We just have to just sort of put everything back the way we found it. <laughs> and make space for the people who are going to do this. And the older generation, let's say people that are, I know how old I am. Let's say people that are 20 years older than me or 30 and 40 years older who have been sitting here holding the energy on the earth and teaching people, people that I've known that have maybe since died, holding this energy of light. And then we learned from them and now we're teaching people what we know and we're holding the energy of light as well. And now we're gonna teach younger people and that's one thing that my guides have said to me is that I have learned a lot of stuff and I need to teach other people what I've learned so they understand. Mm -hmm. Some of it is me channeling it and some of it is I've channeled this for 15 years and it's in my head and I can talk about it. Or I remember them showing it to me. So, and then they're the ones who younger and stronger will maybe still be in employment. And this is where the people that are perhaps on a committee that uh, funnels funding to uh, cleaning up a toxic waste plant or something, you know, there's things that they're gonna do that I'm not gonna do because I'm not working there. And then down to the young people that will bring something else to it. Sort of a fierceness. So these young nine-year-olds and a lot of them that are were born between 2000 and kind of between 2000 and, and now. Sort of like they're this fierce energy. And I think, although Greta Thunberg is older than nine, you can see how fierce she is. Mm -hmm. And the, <laughs> you know, and fierceness is the, the person who stands there and will not be pushed back. Yeah. It was brilliant yesterday. Did you see that, um, the microphone? Yeah. I didn't see she it. She was saying, you know, we must sort the planet out, blah, blah, blah. And she kept putting blah, blah after everything because just showing that nobody's doing anything in the end. It's just talk. So she, no, she was, um, she's going to be at the, uh, is it the COP conference in November? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's great. Mm. Yes. And why does she need to keep repeating herself? She's got a little Ugandan, not little, a young Ugandan um, girl now with her as well. So that's good. Yeah. No, great. Oh, yes, because Africa. Mm. Well, and Africa has a whole different energy. As soon as you look at Africa, you've got this energy of people whose whole continent has been stripped bare and wrecked, yes. practically. Yeah. And there's people down there that are like, but we love our continent. Yes, yeah. We they, love live, it. they live more in the light, I think, than any, any other country. Yeah, you know, mm. they, they, you know, there's, so they would be willing to do what it takes. Mm. So, and everybody's different, but yeah, there's a lot to answer for. But it if, but it's almost like if you look at angels, they're like, well, 
okay, right and wrong. Don't worry about right and wrong. Don't worry about answering or getting punished. Just do it. Don't you learned a lesson by being wrong? Okay, that's how you learned your lesson. You didn't learn it by being right. So you learned it by being wrong. And now you just move on. You just do what you need to do and let it go. Don't live in the past. Just go forward. Just keep going forward. Don't worry about things. Just because uh, whatever it is you worry about tends to be what happens to you. So don't worry. So don't worry about three years. <laughs> just just move forward. And so we, they, we, they always had me work with this. So before I work, they're like, you release the future and all its worries. And you release the past and all its mistakes. And then that puts you right in the present. And when you're right in the present, you can really work. And then if you can release the present for your like meditation work, Mm-hmm. And you're you're clear of time, and you're a bit easier to get a hold of. By you're in the space where they can reach you. Um, and when I say reach you, I mean you're trying to reach them, and they're trying to reach you, and it's easier for you to meet, rather than they're reaching into your head or anything. They're not doing that. Okay, I mean that. I don't even know if that was me not answering a question, but just chatting. Yeah, see, Grania's here, and she. I said, can if you come, can you please put me on? Just keep putting up everything people needs to read. So in the chat, she's putting up things that if people read them, then they can find me. Find us online. And I see Julie's got her phone number up for me. Not for everybody, she'd put that up for me so I can find her and invite her. And and just for anybody who might be joining um, via Facebook Live, it's um, www.candace, C-A-N-D-A-C-E, C-A-D-D-I-C-K, C-A-D-D-I-C-K, dot com. That's right, isn't it? That's right. So perfect, so that's where you find Candace. Yeah, just email me and... Um, it says contact me on there and then uh, I'll just add you to a list. And that is my, the only thing emails from that USA list are about that. It's not like you then end up on a general list and get bombarded. I just send that. It's a, a completely separate list. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was Linda's question about polar bears. <laughs> so we got to with that one. The end of the world. It's not the end of the world. We just change. We just have a different world. You know, but the potential for this, absolutely fantastic, better than it ever was to, Mm. it's it's all there. Yeah. Um, And that's the nice thing. It's like, would you like to live in a paradise world? And we all say, yes, we would. Well, they've got a better than paradise world lined up for us. We all we have to do is just get there. And what's so disappointing about this was that when all of this was starting to be flagged up in the early 1960s, nobody did anything. But we can do, and it's just sort of crunched down on us hard now. I get a bit sad about that. But do you not think it, you know, it's because people needed to learn lessons they hadn't re- experienced, so we can't. You know, we, we can't say whether something's right or wrong, can we? Because it's God's will or the greater picture, isn't it? Yeah, it's that, but it was also... Um, and I have never gotten to the end, uh, to the bottom of what, what happened in the 1960s because it was going the right way in some ways with the hippies, you know, peace and love and everything. Yes, but the rest of it wasn't. <laughs> but it was tra- rest, yeah. People who weren't in peace and love and light. Yeah, we're in the. We're actually expanding materialistically, well, making I... money that was never enough, and pollution, and you know that, that's where it started to me. Yeah, and the big um, military-industrial complexes and yeah. things from the Vietnam War. And fear, fear. We're talking about. So if you know, if. If 90% of the planet was supposed to be in peace and love and the other 10% were living in fear, it would be a different place. But, you know, sometimes you have to think, well, maybe that's not what 
the human race needs to learn to learn to soul level to evolve. You know, it's it's very complex, isn't it? Well, and then I'm thinking, you just let the past go. Exactly. Yes. We did. <laughs> we just can't change the past. Yeah, that's you know that that's what happened, and mm. but now this is what, but this is our moment. You know, right mm. now, mm. this is what Had we do now. Opportunity. A challenge, yeah, and uh, and. It is a bit challenging to remember to read every single thing in the supermarket. And then your husband comes home with something you never would have bought. Well, yes, bless them. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's just, yeah. uh, you do the best you can. And so that's like the big phrase, if you want to take something away, it's like, do the best you can, because that has a huge, lovely energy. And, and also can. give without expecting to receive back for what you've given. I seem to be quoting that quite a bit to people at the moment. Yeah. That's a nice one. Get offended because they're not appreciated. And I said, well, what, you know, what, what do you want? What sort of thing do you want in return? You, if you give, you give unconditionally, not, not, does yeah. that, that wastes energy and it's tiring people doing that. It, yes, that, but I was thinking also that the, the love that leads into service. Yes. Yes. You know, there's some big themes and um, none of us are perfect. So we're never going to do it all, but if we, if we do the best we can, yes, then we, we will make our own progress. And we can't and make you, anybody else's progress, we just make our own. No, and if you give with an open heart, it's amazing the difference to the person opposite you, if you just try it. Yes. I think it's summed up quite nicely, um, Lynn and Candace, in that little phrase, you can <laughs> give without love, but you can't love without giving. Mm. That's nice, isn't it? Yes, that's lovely, Linda, yeah. And I think it's true, you know, if you, if you give them an open heart, then, you know, you're giving with love and, mm. and they mm. keep on and keep on and keep on. So, oh, yeah. Thank you. I like the summary. Does that mean that? I don't know how long this goes on. <laughs> I'm no, happy. I, <laughs> I mean, unless unless they're telling you there's something else you, you need to, to, to share with us. Okay, so let me... They're like... <laughs> Okay, they're like, you are totally depressing. You've got to give them some hope. <laughs> they're like, eh, it just sounds like the whole world's going down in flames. And they're like, it is not like that. They're actually, they're a bit concerned. No, I, think, I think we need to look at the dark <laughs> to appreciate the light. There's that saying, isn't they? You know, you see a star in a, in a dark night. That's right. But the, the light but... in the dark. So you have to, you have, I think we... We need to be aware of both. To be yeah, better. you do. But now they're they're like, you got to fix this. You just made everybody depressed. So what do no, they say? <laughs> well, fix it. You can just contribute towards it and be a catalyst. No, no, no. I mean, for my talk, they're like, not at all. You didn't make us depressed. Not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. No. I was just listening to Gabor Mate before I uh, came oh, on yes. to Cygnus. And he said, uh, he was asked a question in this talk. <laughs> and he and they said, you know, how, how are we going to heal once we recognize that you know we're all uh, basically walking around traumatized <laughs> if not by the only last four years but uh, you know how are we going to heal and and he said well imagine that you could just quantumly like a bit like Deepak Chopra says imagine that you you just you just instantaneously and I thought yeah why are we all making a big long and song and dance about it let's just all imagine we're already there so in a way it's sort of a visualization Yes. And I think you've said some fabulous positive things, and I think you probably already said all of that. No, what but there is Gabor a, said in a different way. But I think they want to say something else. And I think what they wanted, <clears throat> there, it's like so. I'm, this is something I'm seeing, but it, it is the sort of not the peaks and the valleys, but they're they're showing me the the flats and the meadows and the trees, and and that the smoothness is there, and the peaks in the valleys and the rough energy doesn't have to be for everyone. And um, this is part of this before. It's almost like, what are you doing in your life? Or if you're going along, okay, it doesn't mean that the things that are happening to other people are gonna happen to you. Um, it's about, they're like, it's we look after our own, you know, that they, they look after us, that we can rely on them. And there are some hard lessons for some people. But it doesn't mean that all of us have the same hard lessons coming. 
that our job was, they're like, you guys go around, you're doing the best you can, do your daily lives as best you can. And you can, it's almost like, give yourself a pat on the back for doing, actually learning and changing and doing that. And it is hard with the shopping. I mean, I, oh, and it is hard every time you jump in the car to do the shopping, you know, what are we doing? You know, I get in the car and to go, I can't carry all that stuff back without a car. So, you know, it is, how are we making the changes to make this different for us and doing the best we can and not expecting the worst, especially if we're doing the best we can. It's like, no, no, you know, if you're doing the best you can, that's a huge lesson. So you don't need to have all these other lessons because you've already learned them and now you're on to this next thing. Other people haven't, might have a bit of a hard time. Uh, but in some ways that's, you help them as you can, but you can't do it for them. Yeah, no, okay, now they're happier with me. <laughs> they're a bit like, what are you telling them? <laughs> it's like the wrong tone. <laughs> but I can see, you know, you can sort of pick up on them. They're like leaning over my shoulder. You know, they're looking, leaning over my shoulder, looking at the screen and everybody's faces. And um, very much part of the, <laughs> part of the talk. Well, it's wonderful that you've, you've come today and it's wonderful that we know that we've got that, um, yeah, that support <laughs> and that protection. And we, it's up to us now to remember to ask for the help. Always. The appropriate <laughs> help, because sometimes we don't always remember until we're actually sort of at, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to say something, Gronya. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say... Um, the earth magic circles for me have been incredibly empowerful, empowering and uplifting. And I think it's that thing that when we can feel energetically, we're making a huge difference and we're doing that work as energy workers together, then it's much easier to, to feel optimistic about the timelines that are coming down the future. And so if anybody wants to you know, experience an earth magic circle. We're really happy to give complimentary tickets for people to, to come along and see what we're up to. Um, and we're constantly receiving those angelic teachings through um, Candace's guides in the meditation. So I can see in a year and a half how the group has really changed. Um, and it's, I, I just can't even describe the difference it's made in my life. And they say, do the work in the earth magic circle and then take those actions in your daily life. And it's kind of like the being and doing energy. So yeah, everyone's really welcome to those two. Yeah. But you, Thank know, you. What, you know, you, you have to walk the walk as well as talk the talk, don't you? And that's what you're doing, which is, which is really wonderful. So, so yeah, the invitation is out there then everybody you know how to find um candace yeah you can find me <laughs> so. but, and that um the complimentary tickets if somebody would like to try it yeah just email me and then i pass it on and you get a ticket amazing to grania grania is very good at all that <laughs> <laughs> amazing well look thank you so much um candace thank you so much to um everybody seen and unseen for your presence today <laughs> your loving presence today <laughs> usually appreciate it been a wonderful morning of learning and sharing um i think i could say to julia to stop the recording now so thank you everybody if you watched and joined online um and then once the recording is stopped then you're very welcome to stay in the zoom room for tea and informal chat if you wish and if you've got time of course <laughs>